The Toronto Tour 2017. The Union Station, located at 65 French Street West, is one of Ontario's busiest railway stations, located in the downtown core of Toronto. It opened in 1927 and is designed as an inspiration for Beau Art style of architecture, which is fully seen at the exterior facade at French Street with 22 equally spaced Roman Tuscan columns. Also with the main entrance, it has two sets of four columns composed of Ionic, Doric, and Corinthian order. The building contains a hip roof, just like a palagio, and contains large arch windows. Just right across the street from the Union Station is the Fairmont Royal York Hotel. Built around 1929, it was expanded during the 1950s by the same architectural firm that built the Union Station, Ross and McDonald. During its renovation, a golden spiral staircase was built in the lobby's main floor and in the middle was a clock tower. The chateau style of the Fairmont It has arch windows at the front, the building has di is dimly lit and has a beautiful elaborate paintings on both the ceiling and the walls of the lobby. One of the most alluring hotel lobbies I have ever seen. Right beside the Fairmont Royal York is the Royal Bank Plaza at 2 Bay Street and it was built in 1979 by the architectural firm WZMH Architects. The headquarters of Royal Bank of Canada contains two towers. The South Tower with 40 floors is the taller one, while the North Tower is the shortest of the two and only has 26 floors. The exterior of the building has windows that are tinted with 24 karat gold to lower heating bills. Since gold is a good insulator, the building stands at 180 meters tall. The Toronto Dominion Centre is located at King and Bay Street. It is also known as the TD Centre and has six buildings built during the late 1960s till the early 1990s. The architect is none other than the famous v Mies van der Rohe. The style of the building is inspired by the international style that van der Rohe popularized during his time. They are all modern, simple, and linear buildings influenced by the Seagram Building in New York. The structure is composed of black steel and aluminum with bronze tinted glass. First Canadian Place is located at 100 King Street West. It was completed in 1975. It is where the Bank of Montreal offices are held at. BH Architects and Edward Durrell Stone were the architectural firms that designed this building. The building is inspired by the international style of architecture since it is very modern and simple. The original exterior cladding of this building was made with Carrara marble, although it was replaced with glass panels because the marble started to fall off, which made the area unsafe. While making the building, architects thought of sunlight, open space, and trees. The Old Scotia Plaza was designed by the architect Mathers and Haldenby with Beck and Edie between 1946 and 1951. The style for the old building is Art Deco, lavish ornamentation decor that reflects the mythical figures of Neptune and Rhea carved by Frederick Winkler are on the exterior of the building. New Scotia Plaza is the third tallest building in Canada. Its style is postmodernism, and it was built in 1986 to 1988. Its red Napoleon granite covers the exterior and interior surfaces. The windows are made of dark tinted glass framed by granite and reinforced concrete. This building was designed by architect WZMH. The CIBC Plaza was designed by the architects Pearson and Darling with York Sawyer in 1930. Its style is art deco due to its vaulted ceiling within that was built with reinforced concrete lined with steel on a base of solid rock, similar to ancient Roman baths of Rome. The faces that you can point out in the building represent courage, observation, foresight, and enterprise in the 32nd floor. The Brookfield Place is located on Bay Street and consists of two towers that are both made with concrete, glass, and steel. The architect who designed this unique structure is Bregman and Ham in 1992. This building was designed in the style of postmodernism. With the use of AutoCAD, the architect was able to create the intertwining steel arches and support pillars with exact measurements. The architect Frank Darling and George Curry built the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1885 to 1993. This building was built in the Beaux-Arts style. This building was one of the few to survive the Toronto Fire in 1904. Looking at the double facade, it reflects culture through the importance of hockey to Canada. You can spot out the four tall piers that support a pediment by each of the two main facades, which reflect a Pantheon theme. Carved masks and sculpted shields also represent the elements of art. The architects Peter Dickinson designed the Sony Centre for the Performing Arts in the style of mid-century modernism. 
glazing granite, copper, bronze for the exterior of the structure along with solid brass doors. The design is distinctive and brings culture and art together. This building is the largest soft cedar in Canada. Situated on the south side of Front Street East is the Beardmore Building. Built in 1873, it was designed by Walter Strickland in the Second Empire French Renaissance style. Associated with the development of Toronto's warehouse district and local production of prefabricated cast iron, the Beardmore is thought to be one of the few remaining examples in Ontario with the cast iron facade and is protected on the, under the Ontario Heritage Act. Cast iron became an economic alternative to carved stone in the 1960s. Notice how iron mimics the decoration of carved stone in the pressed metal cornice. Second Empire style shows through the slate mansard roof, the rounded dormer window centrally placed over the center bay, and pairs of arched windows. Known as the Coffin Block, a uniquely shaped piece of land created by the intersection of Wellington Street East and Front Street, the Flatiron Building was erected on this coffin-shaped land in 1892, and its inordinary shape has made it one of the most photographed buildings in Toronto. Architect David Roberts Jr. designed it for the Goodham family, an industrious family owning many businesses including a distillery. The style of this building contains both Gothic and Romanesque qualities. You can see this in the intricate Romanesque designs in the decorative frieze and cornice and arched windows. The Gothic style is shown in the steeply pitched roof with pointed dormers and prominent tower with the pointed cone. The St. Lawrence Market was done by the architect Henry Boyer Lane in 1845. The tinted glass, limestone, granite, red brick, and white stone that was used was influenced by the Romanesque style, although it was built in the Georgian tradition. Across the street from the St. Lawrence Market is the St. Lawrence Hall, a National Historic Site of Canada. Built in 1849 and considered to be the greatest achievement of architect William Thomas is a fine example of the Renaissance Revival and Victorian Classicism. Features of the style can be seen in the classical proportions, fine stonework, mansard roof with ornate cornice and pendentive supported by giant fluted and gauged columns, the domed cupola resting on the classical columns, classically inspired Corinthian capitals. This profound structure was built as a venue for lecture, concert balls, and receptions for the Toronto 19th century elite. It was also a gathering place for abolitionist meetings in the years when Canada was receiving thousands of underground railroad refugees from American slavery. Restored in 1967, the hall today remains an active cultural centre. Here we stand at the St. James Cathedral designed by Frederick William Cumberland Thomas, an Anglican church that has been rebuilt three times. The Gothic Revival Church is built of local stone, brick, and copper. Notice the Gothic pointed arches, the tallest town spire in Canada, the flying buttress wall supports with decorative pinnacles that also act as a counterweight to sturdy the walls. Each part of the building has a functional purpose. The interior is equally beautiful with the stained glass windows letting in light and coloring the walls. The impressive bare wall creates a tall open space. The north-south orientation is unusual to the typical east-west orientation of a gothic church that allows in light during the morning service. The park outside the church is lovely and a beautiful green space in the city. A connection can be made between this peaceful and moral ground and its location for Occupy Toronto Rally a non-violent protest against economic inequality and corporate greed. Take a look at the Toronto Street Post Office. The facade is a reflection of the Greek Revival neoclassical style designed by architect Frederick William Cumberland and Thomas Redu. Classical proportions, rectangular massing, symmetrical facade, and decorative stonework, structural ionic columns carrying an entablature capped by the royal arms of England. A sense of stability, democracy, confidence, and wealth is translated through the Greek Revival style and resonates with the representation of a post office, the Bank of Canada, and now home to a private investment company. A great example of the Italianate New Renaissance style is the consumer gas building facade designed by David B. Dick in 1899. It is a stone building with granite columns, decorative stonework, ionic columns on the first floor, Baroque inspired oval windows on the right that add an asymmetrical quality. Uniform detail creates a sense of harmony. The building was originally the consumer gas head office and now it is the Rosewater Super Club.